People are saying I'm lucky that my haircut robot didn't carve my face. That got me thinking, what if it did? And instead of my face, it was a pumpkin. Here's the plan. Take my haircutting robot and repurpose it with a new business end. For example, this spindle from a milling machine. I'm pretty sure I can use this to make traditional pumpkins by carving out chunks, as well as pro pumpkins by varying the depth of cut to control how light passes through the pumpkin. In theory, I should be able to take any image and carve it into a pumpkin. For example, a recreation of my wife glaring at me. We'll see if she thinks this is as funny as I do. I've seen people put a pumpkin into a CNC machine, which is hilarious but I've never seen anyone make a custom made machine to carve a pumpkin. Probably because it's a really dumb thing, but I love dumb stuff. If you haven't seen my haircut robot, I'll link the video here. It's basically a five axis CNC machine with a special end that can cut my hair. I'm going to remove the hair cutting attachment and replace it with this milling spindle. But before that, there's just a couple issues to fix with the haircut robot. I'm gonna make a few select modifications so that it can stand up to the rigors of CNC milling. So we barely even started and my master plan has already fallen apart. I got into the CAD and one thing led to another and the only part left of the robot is the big circular bearing. Have you ever seen where someone finds a really old airplane underwater from World War II or something, and then they restore it? And it's all new parts, except for like one piece from the original aircraft. This reminds me of that. I should also point out that this is an awful way to make a CNC machine. Even though I stiffened it up, this design is very floppy. It's not too late to build it another way. All right, let's just build it. I'm gonna reuse all the electronics, which is nice. Making this robot uses all the tools. It's got machining. 3D printing. This is a Form 3. It makes incredible parts. It's got lathe work, welding, laser cutting. This is new. CNC routing with the always awesome 24R. You might be thinking this is some ancient religious symbol. It's actually a new giant gear for rotating the entire cutting head. As usual, there's lots of plasma cutting. The only problem is that my plasma cutter is broken. Hey wife. Yeah. I have great news. I need to get another plasma cutter. How many plasma cutters do you need? Well, that's easy. Yeah, I just, just need... one more, I know. So, is that a yes? I can't even keep track of all your tools. I'm gonna take that as yes. Oh, and I'm gonna need you to park your car in the driveway. What? Thanks. I know just who to call. Hey Siri, ask Tormach if they'd like to work with me again. Tormach says sure. If you follow my channel, you know that my plasma cutter is like my baby. And you might be wondering why I would replace my baby with someone else's baby. Well, their baby's better. It's called the Tormach 1300PL, and it's hot off the presses. If you have no idea what a plasma cutter is, they are awesome. They make a high current arc of electricity between a torch and whatever you want to obliterate. Similar to a TIG welder, except there's a high speed flow of gas overlapping with the arc. This makes the gas super hot and ionized, which is why it's called a plasma cutter. The super hot gas coming out of the tip is like a juggernaut. Nothing can stop it. It cuts through steel like butter. I mainly use this to cut out sheet metal patterns that I bend and weld like origami to very quickly and cheaply make structures. So here's why their baby's better. It has clear path stepper motors, which are really good. These are what I used in my basketball robot. It uses path pilot control, which is great. And it's the same software on all my other CNC machines. It has presets. This is so simple, but such a time saver. And it isn't constantly broken. All I gotta do is get it horizontal, get the legs installed and some side panels, connect up the electronics, and we're in business. It has this tray full of coolant which catches most of the metal smoke. You really don't want to breathe it. The blue coolant isn't the only thing that looks like a toilet. That's how you know it's working. Check out this sliding water table. It makes it possible to cut pipes and big stuff. I am so excited to have this in my arsenal. Now that that's built, let's make some pumpkins. All right, we finally have a pumpkin carving machine. It has all the degrees of freedom to move anywhere on the pumpkin, at least in theory. The robot can't actually do anything yet. I have to write software for it. You are so useless right now. Your mom is useless. <laughs> Making the robot is only a small part of the work. You can think of it as the appetizer. The real meat is the software. Here's the basic workflow that I'm going for. I'd like to be able to draw a picture or maybe take a photo off the internet and cut that into a random pumpkin. The rough plan is to put a pumpkin into the robot, measure where it is with a special tool in the robot, take the picture that I want and somehow map it onto the scanned pumpkin shape, then convert that into a series of moves that the robot will dutifully execute, with the result being my picture cut into the pumpkin. 
Let's talk about mapping a 2D image onto a pumpkin. There's actually no way to do this. Something has to give. Either have to fold the paper or stretch it. I am far from the first person to run into this problem. In fact, it's been driving flat earthers and cartographers crazy for centuries because the earth is no blaze spheroid. What did you just call me? To solve my image wrapping problem, I'm going to steal a technique all the way back from 1569 called the Mercator projection. It's a way to unwrap a sphere onto a piece of paper or vice versa. It was invented for maps. This is good for this project because when you convert from paper to sphere, vertical lines will stay oriented to longitude lines and horizontal lines will stay parallel to latitude lines. This isn't necessarily true for other ways of mapping spheres to planes, but it's important for my memes to look good. The main downside of Mercator is that things get squished at the poles because that's where all the longitude lines come together. Here's what the earth looks like on a Mercator projection. And this is what the actual size of the land masses are. I'm okay with this because I plan to do most of my carving away from the poles of the pumpkin. Like many STEM topics, trying to read Wikipedia to understand a Mercator projection is a great way to feel inadequate. Maybe that's just me, I'm not sure. Here's how it works. Imagine that I put my sphere inside of a cylinder and inside of my sphere, there's a light shining out in all directions. If there's a little something on the surface of my sphere, the light will project it somehow onto the surface of my cylinder. The way I've drawn it, light will escape out the top, but if I make this infinitely long, it will capture all of the projections from the light. And then if I split this cylinder down the side and unrolled it, my map might look something like this. I could then squash it down to whatever map size I want and I have a Mercator projection. That's basically how it works. So let's build it. I just don't get it. Why isn't this working? I've been banging on this Mercator projection code for hours. Something in the math is just not making any sense. All right, I found a hack to my problem, but it's nasty. What I'm doing is <laughs> That's such a dirty hack, it should be illegal. All right, I can now wrap whatever picture I want around a sphere. The problem is that perfectly spherical pumpkins are incredibly rare. I have to find a way to deal with pumpkins and all their blobby imperfections. If I don't, the machine can't possibly cut in the right location or to the correct depth. This is where measuring the pumpkin comes into play. I made this special tool for the spindle which has a little switch on it. With this, I can move towards the pumpkin until I see the switch trigger. That tells me that I hit the pumpkin. I pop this into the robot and probe every nook and cranny of the pumpkin. All you do is run tsa.exe. Keep your hands where I can see them. Is that a bomb? You are a terrorist. For every point that I probe, I record where the tip was, and then that collection of points gives me an estimate of the surface of the pumpkin. All right, we are almost there now, finally. I can now take any picture and wrap it onto a sphere, and I know where my pumpkin is and what shape it is. The tricky bit is how to take my image from the surface of the sphere to the surface of the pumpkin. What I do is pretend that the pumpkin is inside of a perfect sphere. And the center of the sphere is in the center of the pumpkin. For every point that I measured on the surface of the pumpkin, I project a ray out to the surface of the sphere and see where it hits the sphere. So what this tells me is that this point on the sphere corresponds to this point on the pumpkin. This point corresponds to this point and so on. This gives me a way to convert from pumpkin space to sphere space. One other quick point. Imagine my pumpkin was really messed up and it had some tumor thing hanging off the side. This pumpkin will not work for the method that I just described because if I project a ray out onto the surface of the sphere, I don't know if it came from here or here. It's ambiguous. Writing the code for all this is just describing to the computer in excruciating detail everything that I just explained. You'd think I'd be better at this by now. Congratulations, we can now wrap a meme around a pumpkin. The final boss step is turning this into a series of moves that the machine will obediently perform. If everything works out, the end result will be my wife's face carved into the pumpkin. There are easy and hard ways to generate these series of moves. When is Halloween? Yeah, we're going with the easy way. So remember, I want this robot to be able to do two things, cut out shapes like old school pumpkins and cut lithophanes. The idea behind a lithophane is that you vary the thickness of a translucent material to get different colors. You can use this effect to get a lot more detail than you can by cutting out chunks because it has shades of gray. 50 wasn't quite enough for me, so I programmed it to have 254. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm gonna be teaching you how to make toolpaths. All you need is a pumpkin, the thing you're gonna be cutting with, and whatever you'd like to cut onto the pumpkin. Start off by taking your desired image and mapping it onto the pumpkin. Then find the outlines of all the regions. After that, offset the edges in by the radius of the tool. This will ensure you cut the right shape. If you cut all the way to the edge, the part will be too big. If the tool is too big for the region, cut down the middle of it because it's better to have something than nothing. Then, just make moves for the robot to go from one region to another, and you're ready to cut outlines. To cut a lithophane, simply fill each region with horizontal cuts, 
Then, set the depth of each cut according to the color of the picture. And that's all there is to it. This is a recipe that the whole family is gonna love because you're awesome. All right, the robot's built, the software is done. Now it's time to have some fun. Oh no. <coughs> Never mind. So what happened is I had accidentally connected plus to minus and minus to plus, and that fried everything. The microcontroller, the ICs, it fried my laptop. That really set me back. But I have replaced everything. All right, it doesn't seem like anything happened. That's good. When it seems like something happened, that's when you know it's bad. Okay, now we can get into the meat. Wow, everything worked on the first try. Yeah, I wish. You've probably heard me talk about integration hell before. It's when you try to put all the pieces together for a robot like this and nothing works. Yeah, I was in integration hell for quite a while. And I guess it fits really nicely with the Halloween theme. So let's start with a quick and easy test. Do anything fun this weekend. Oh, wow, cool. I should probably turn that off. Cutting out chunks is no problem and works really well. This is a caricature of our daughter. She has three teeth and smiles just like this. That's cool, but I made this to make pumpkins that I can't make with my own hands. Hey, what'd you carve on your pumpkin? A pumpkin. I don't know why I like that so much. It's not really very funny. Pretty cool, but I didn't cut deep enough, so it's harder to see than it should be. Trying to cut this pumpkin has exposed all of the software bugs. I've been trying to cut this for like five hours. I'm not gonna leave this basement until this pumpkin is cut. You're an idiot. I ended up sleeping in the basement so I could monitor it while I was cutting. I wish I was kidding. All that and it's still super hecked up. I don't know what the deal is. It should look like this. I wish I would have remembered the baby monitor before I slept in the basement. If we keep trying, we should succeed eventually, right? This one definitely has that just put me out of my misery aesthetic. Something is really wrong. Let's see how the wife lithophane does. All the software seems good, but this is still crap. Okay, I finally found a huge problem. This is supposed to be tight. All right, I took everything apart, put it back together. It's now fixed. That fix did the trick and I carved a few more pumpkins, including a good lithophane of my wife's face. She's gonna determine if these pumpkins are any good by rendering a verdict on a scale of one to 10. First up, portrait of our daughter. 10, no 10. question. Okay. How about the pumpkin pumpkin? It's like a self-portrait. A reflection on what it means to be a pumpkin. <laughs> Three to four. Three? Oh. When's the last time you saw a pumpkin carved into a pumpkin? That's true. I call this the huge waste of time. The robot got loose. It, uh, it didn't run away, cool. but it, it, it got floppy. Seven. All right. This is my personal favorite. I look pretty messed up. You look mad. In terms of aesthetic appeal, I'd give it a three. If you that, don't think very highly generous. of yourself. Hopefully that's not really me. Wait until I overlay the photo. <laughs> Looks just like you. Only when you're glaring at me, but that's exactly how it feels to look down those those little pupils. Hmm. <laughs> this one looks like that meme where they tried to restore that painting. The way I might describe this is it's just saying, kill me. You kind of look like the Girl Scout logo. A two. A two, come on. Maybe we're seeing different things. I'm seeing a profile. I'm seeing an old shriveled head <laughs> looking, looking sideways <laughs> saying, kill I mean, me. <laughs> all right, well. It does look sadder now the more I'm looking at it. Well, the funny thing is these are all derived from your face. Well, we all know the winner. The big takeaway is that just because something's hard, it doesn't mean that it's good. I really want to see that crazy pattern working, so let's try again. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and keeps you in the loop when there's new videos posted. If you'd like to support these projects directly and get behind the scenes info, check out my Patreon. And the last way you can help is to check out any sponsors. Now we're talking. I'm really happy with this result, although I would like it to be a little cleaner. My guess is that this is a combination of using really cheap cutters and my machine not being stiff enough. I'll fix both next time. Disregard the robot in the frame. I'm going to tell you about today's sponsor, Audible. Before you say, oh, sponsor and get out of here, a couple reasons to stick around. One, I'm going to be trying to carve the promo code into this pumpkin. This is actually the first time I've ever tried to use this robot and there's a good chance it's not gonna work. So hopefully an interesting result. The other reason is Audible is awesome. I love it and I think you're gonna love it too. It's a vast collection of audiobooks and other spoken word things. The great thing about it is I can learn while I'm doing other things. It's kind of like getting extra hours in your day because you get to get more out of every hour. If I were writing a business book, one of my keys to success would be Audible. Sorry, it looked like my robot was about to kill itself.
I really love learning about how people did something, especially something hard. There's this book I was reading recently about the effort to make the atomic bomb. It has the really original title of The Making of the Atomic Bomb. It's an absolutely epic book. It goes into the science, the physicists, the politics. It's so good. There's so many takeaways from a book like this. You can learn so much from the past. The only problem is it's a really intimidating book. It's like a 50 hour book. But because I can listen to it when I'm in the shop or just doing whatever things where my brain is idle, it's great. All right, here it goes. We had a slight technical difficulty. I was cutting too deep, so it was cutting something though. Let's try again. Signing up for Audible gets you access to a gigantic library of titles. They call it their plus library, as well as a credit every month for any book. Can you see the problem? It cut it backwards. You should try Audible, it's amazing. You'll get more hours in your day and you can get a free month by going to audible.com slash stuff made here or texting stuff enough after enough after history and I'm just kidding. You can text stuff made here to 500 500. Let's go get this cleaned up and see how it looks. <sighs> Definitely some stuff to improve, but I'm happy. You'll be happy too if you go get Audible. Get your free trial at audible.com/stuffmadehere or listen to the pumpkin and text stuff made here to 500 500.